Moving on with determinants, in the last video we talked about how to find the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. We know that we can just multiply the diagonals and then subtract them. So determinants of 2 by 2 is a very easy formula. Determinants of 3 by 3 is maybe not so easy. So I'm just going to give you the formula right away. So here's this formula here, and we're going to do an example with this formula, but then we're going to talk about how the formula can be adjusted or manipulated so you can maybe use it to your advantage. Okay, so what this formula does is it's going to expand upon the first row, and I'll explain that later in the video, but notice it uses the values of A, B, and C. So meaning we're looking at the values of the first row. So what you do when you expand upon the first row is you start with your first value of A, and it's like you remove the row in the column that have that value in it. And then you find the determinant of the two by two matrix that's left over. So notice you have this two by two matrix here. So you're going to find the determinant of it. And remember those bars, that means you're going to find the determinant of that value there. Okay, then you subtract and you do the same thing with all entries in that row. So you take your B value, which is here, you remove the row and you remove the column that B is in, and you find the determinant of what's left over. So the determinant of these values here. Okay, and of course then you do it last but not least with the C value. Remove that row, remove that column, and take the determinant of the four entries that you have left. Okay, so we have this example down here, so let's find the determinant of this three by three example. Notation on the left, the determinant of A is equal to, so I'm gonna start with my A value, which is on the top left, and that gives us a seven. And remember, it's like we remove that row and that column, and we find the determinant of the two by two matrix that's left over. So that would give us zero times negative five, which is zero, minus one times three, which is three. Okay, then moving on with my formula, I move on to my B value. Notice that this one is subtracted, so minus, my B value in this matrix is negative four. Be very careful of those negatives. And we remove that row and that column, and we find the determinant of the two by two matrix that's left. So two times negative five, which is negative 10, minus four times three, which is 12, okay? And then we move on to our third piece of the formula, the C value. So my C value is six, and we remove that row and that column, and we find the determinant of what's left over. So the determinant of this here is two, time one, two times one is two, minus four times zero, which is zero. All right, so now all we have left is simple math. So I have seven times zero minus three gives me negative three. Over here, I have minus a negative four, so that gives me plus four times negative 10 minus 12 gives me negative 22, plus six times two times zero, which is two. So that's negative 21 minus 88 plus 12. So if I add or subtract all those numbers together, that tells me that the determinant of A is equal to negative 97. And I'll show you how to check that with a calculator or with a website in one of my later videos. Okay, so to find the determinant of a three by three matrix, you can just memorize this formula here. And this formula, like I said before, expands upon the first row. Okay, well, there's different ways to find the determinant of three by three matrices. We don't always have to expand upon the first row. We can expand upon something else. And so let me show you how to do that. But before we jump right into it entirely, we have some little things that we need to talk about first. Okay, so the first thing that we need to talk about is a minor of a matrix. 
So a minor of a matrix is the determinant of some smaller square matrix cut down from a larger matrix by removing one row or one column. And we saw that we actually did that three different times in the last example. So when we talked about this C value here, notice we removed that row and that column, and that gave us a two by two matrix. So that is a minor of this matrix here. And when we combine minors with cofactors, and I'll explain that in the next slide, that's going to give us the components that give us our overall formula for the determinant of the matrix. Okay, so let's talk about minors first, moving on to cofactors, and then we'll put all the pieces together. So here, we want to find the minor of M11. Well, that means we're gonna take away the first row and we're gonna take away the first column. Okay, so if I take away the first row and I take away the first column, notice that I have this two by two matrix left over. So to find the determinant of that is easy so you take negative six times five minus negative three times seven. Be very careful of those negatives. Negative 30 minus a negative 21 or negative 30 plus 21. So that gives me a negative nine. So the minor removing the first row and the first column is negative nine. Okay. So M23 in my second example over here is going to remove the second row and the third column. So I'm going to remove my second row and my third column. And so I'm going to compute the determinant of these four entries that I have left over. So it gives me negative eight times negative three minus a negative one times zero. So it gives me positive 24 minus zero or 24. So the minor removing the second row and the third column is 24. Okay, now we need to combine these with cofactors to give us our overall matrix. And what the cofactor is, is it talks about the sign. So let me backtrack here for just a second. Notice when we talk about this formula here, we have a positive A value a negative B value and a positive C value. Well, why? Why are some of them positive and one of, some of them negative? That is dependent upon the cofactor. So let's talk about that. Okay, the cofactor is obtained by multiplying the minor, was that determinant of the smaller matrix, by a sign. So this negative one to the I plus J. I represents the row, J represents the column. So if we take negative one to an even power, it's going to be positive. If we take negative one to an odd power, it's going to be negative. So depending on whether it's even or odd, that's gonna tell us whether those numbers are positive or negative. Okay. So if we find A sub one one, that's finding the minor times the appropriate sign that it needs to be with. Okay, all right, so to find a sub one one, that gives me negative one to the first row plus first column times my minor of one one. Okay, so that gives me negative one squared. Now my minor of, of one one, we already did that. We took away the first row and the first column that gave us negative 30 minus a negative 21. So negative one squared, that gives us a positive one times a negative nine. So that gives me a negative nine. So notice my cofactor of one one and my minor of one one is exactly the same because I come up with a positive value. Okay, now let me talk about my cofactor, sub two, three, removing my second row and my third column. So I need to worry about the sign first, so negative one to the two plus three, row plus column, times the minor sub two, three. So this gives me negative one to the fifth power. Now remember the minor of two, three is removing my second row and third column. That was positive 24 minus zero. 
So negative 1 to an odd power is negative, and 24 minus 0 is 24. So this one changes the sign, so that gives me a negative 24. So if we go back to that first formula that I gave you to find the determinant of a 3 by 3, let's talk about a here for a second. If I do a, notice that's my first row and my first column. So my cofactor of that would be 1 plus 1, or negative 1 squared, or it would be positive 1. If I talk about my cofactor of this b value here, that would be negative 1 to the 1 plus 2, my first row, my second column, or negative 1 to the 3, that's to the odd, that would be negative 1. So that's why this one is negative here. If I talk about my c, that's my negative 1 to the 1 plus 3, first row, third column, or negative 1 to the fourth, which is negative 1 to an even power, which is positive 1. So that's why this one is positive there. So we can expand upon any row as long as we use these cofactors times the minors. So now we see a little bit more about where this formula comes from. We can see that we're talking about the minors because that's a smaller determinant of the larger determinant. And we can talk about the cofactors because now we know whether they should be positive or negative along the way. Okay. Now, we can always use this formula to talk about the cofactor, the negative 1 to the, one, to the i plus j. Or, if you're looking at a 3 by 3 matrix, it will always have the same signs as this here. So notice, if I look at the first one, it's going to be 1 plus 1, which is going to be 2 or even, so it comes up to be positive. If I talk about this sign here, I'm in my first row plus my second column. That's going to be odd or negative. And I can do that for any one of these here. If I look at this one here, that's going to be my third row plus my second column. That's going to be odd or it's going to be negative. So you can always just memorize this formula here. Or, if you're only doing determinants of a 3 by 3 matrix, you know that your top left entry is going to be positive because it's going to be even, and every other cofactor is going to flip-flop beyond that, no matter which direction that you're going to head. So instead of me memorizing this formula here and computing it every single time, I actually just memorize this thing here. Now remember, this is for a 3 by 3 matrix, so if you have to do something bigger, then it's going to be adjusted a little bit from that. So now I have discussed all the little components, and that's going to tell us how to find the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix that's going to expand upon any row or any column, not just with the formula that I gave you first and foremost, where it expands upon the first row. So in the next video, we'll do some examples by expanding upon something else.